Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings, both mentally and physically, to watching every... Well, the physical action is sitting down, but still. Is de dedicating every single part of ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is in existence and available to us. Starting with our main series being Gintama, and our other series that we swear we'll get to is Kuroko. It's a lot of episodes that we have to watch, <laughs> so we have to give it the right time. But thankfully... We're ready and ready, ready, willing, and able. I don't know why I'm saying it's fine. I'm making a reference that no one will pick up because no one else remembers the bad era of wrestling back in the day. But I'm making it to myself at this point. We're going to be talking about episodes 216, 217, 218, 219, and 220. Five episodes of Gintama. So let's start off with episode 216. I can't remember a damn thing about the factory tour. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, there's not a lot of work coming in to the Odd Jobs crew, and they're like, we need we need something to do, and so Kagura brings, like, her buddies over, like, her, her friend group, I guess, mm -hmm. and, uh, they try to, like, impress them. So, Gintoki is uh, pretending to be, like, a craftsman, and he's like, yeah, quick, close the door, I'm making my, my patriots, um, and then he's like, would you all prefer uh, Calcutta or Meso? And they're like, oh my god, Calcutta. And it's actually just like coffee and milk. It's not <laughs> actually what he said it is. Um, and he's like, yeah, we build, we build Patriots. And it turns out a Patriot is like uh, toilet paper and Tissue box. tissues yeah. like connected. Um, and they're like, wow, that's useless. And their defense is, yeah, lots of shit is useless. <laughs> they're like, yeah, everything is. Um... And one kid gets, like, really shitty about it. Uh, and so Kagura hits him in the head with one of the Patriots, and it turns him hard-boiled. And he's like, I don't remember what he says. But they're like, oh, my God, that's really hard-boiled. Yeah, he t he goes back to the Calcutta this. He's like, I actually, I drink this. And they go like, damn, that's hard-boiled. <laughs> hard-boiled, yeah. Um, but this makes Gintoki depressed because he's like, damn it, I, I am I really useless? <laughs> is What is this? What did I make this? And he's, like, really upset with himself that they don't like the Patriots. Um, they bump into uh, Hijikata, who's like talking to these kids, and one of the kids is like sh like shitting on the law, basically, and it's like pissing him off. Uh, and then Sachan and Sukoyo are there. Um, so yeah, Sukoyo is give them... is giving a tour to the kids to talk about because they're all doing like job tours. And hers is specifically has to do with Yoshiwara, so it's a bunch of little boys trying to ask her about her work. <laughs> Yeah, and they ask, like, what people in the, the Yoshiwara do. Uh, and then Sachan is there pretending to be one because she wants to know, like, the secrets because she wants <laughs> to impress Kentoki, I guess. Um, and then they both end up bursting into tears because she goes to, like, use a Patriot to give a demonstration and all the kids run away. <laughs> they're like, this is what girls are like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Kondo is giving a tour on stalking. And he's mm -hmm. like... And then Hasegawa is like, hey, everyone has to do jobs they hate. I'm a patriot. And he's like dressed up like in Tokyo's patriot invention. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they send out invites to a factory tour that's like a horror... I thought it was going to be a much darker plot line than it was because these kids show up to this factory that's like <laughs> fucked up and awful with barbed wire fencing and everything. Dude, it's crazy that we saw this while that AI Willy Wonka shit is going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it was weird, man. Um, and so they get invited by Shimpachi and Kagura who are doing like a Willy Wonka thing. Um, and they're like, yeah, aren't you excited for the tour? If you don't want to be here, you can leave at any time because the kids are being like smart asses about it. Uh, and then Sachan and Sukoyo show up and like, oh, wow, a Patriot factory. Let's go inside. And they step across the fence line and they're instantly shot in the head <laughs> by Hijikata, who's got a rifle. And he was like, yeah, some some people crossed the border and I, I took them out in one shot. And then he's like, good job. But those are my customers. And then Hijikata gets shot in the head by Gintoki, <laughs> who's like, all right who's ready for the tour and all the kids are like we don't want to go 
And so Gintoki goes, all right, but you know too much. Take him out. But then Gintoki gets shot <laughs> by Kakura and Shimpachi. <laughs> and then they go on the tour because the kids are afraid they're going to get killed if they don't. And the whole tour is like, the history of the Patriot, which is a fake story about Factory Chief Gintoki's life, mm. and about how he wanted to, uh, he didn't want to own his father's toilet paper factory, and he wanted to, like, fulfill his dream to create the Patriot. Uh, and then one day he did, and he's like running along this conveyor belt because they have to bring him back to life as part of the tour because yeah. he's dead from getting <laughs> shot. Um, and they bring him back to life, and he, it ends with him running on the conveyor belt toward, uh, like, a naked Hasegawa dressed like an angel. Who's being his um, father. Yeah, it's the, it's the soul of his dead father. Um, and he's, like, running along the thing, and so they're like, all jobs deserve respect, children. Now go do your job and help the factory owner. And they jump in and, like, kick the shit out of Gintoki. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, this was ass. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and they just bounce. Yep, and that's how it goes. The full learnings of the Patriot. I also like that um, during the end credits, someone brought this up to it because I realized it when it was... Um, I, I didn't bring it up, but I realized it was something silly to have in the ED. But the ED, every episode changes. And they put something new in the background. Like in the previous episode, it was the Empeta as Takatsuji. And then this one, it is Hasegawa angel form up in the air, <laughs> screaming at everyone with the with the Patriot in hand. <laughs> and they change it every episode. I just wanted to make a mention just so just to bring it up. Also, we didn't bring up the ED last time just because we were so sad the Samurai Heart is gone. But this is a no, this is a good ED. <laughs> It's just not yeah, Samurai it's Heart. Yeah, it's fine. It's no Samurai Heart. But no. It's, good. it's a pretty it's a pretty good like, yeah, you know, we're here to end it, feel good and then that. It's it's a, it's a different kind of style one. It's just that <laughs> we were so distraught last episode that it was going away. We didn't even bring it up. <laughs> so I felt bringing it up here. Uh, this episode I really like because it was really funny and it's also based off of the idea of just screwing with kids, which I think is funny <laughs> when done correctly. Um we talked about beforehand about how a lot of the odd jobs, what their actual job is, seems to be making people's lives worse in some kind of way. And it feels like that's what they're kind of trying, they're almost kind of doing with these kids. Because these kids just want a regular, like, factory tour of some kind. And then they take them down, like, this terrible path of what they're trying to do. Um, in terms of the episode, I really like this Patriot that they keep bringing up. I don't actually, they never say what the actual purpose is of it. Like, even when they're doing, like, the, the, the conveyor line to show, like, the Patriot, like, they try and say it. It's like, the first step is that we have a tissue box, or as we call it, this. It goes like, why are you calling it that when you clearly just called it a tissue box? It's not an individual item at all. Um, and the actual idea of, like, how do they actually make use of this, and the only idea they have is just hit people with it over and over and over again. <laughs> and they do it with, uh, Kagura at the beginning, where she hits the kid, and then later on, Hijikata does the same thing, where he starts beating him, uh, beating him when he's on the conveyor belt to get him, to revive him back from the dead. Um, I liked it when they showed everyone giving the kids, like, different things about their jobs, uh, especially that kid who was just being real shitty to Hijikata, talking about, like, so what is the law? What about it? Because, like, like, the kid just keeps, like, undercutting him at every given time. Because, like, so what you're saying, like, well, we, we base it, we change it based off of the law. He goes, like, well, if a law can change, is it really truly a just law to begin with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're, like, it's a case-by-case -case basis. And then at some point, he, uh... He, like, has a cigarette, and he's putting it out on his own skin. Yeah, because he's like, if that's the case, should you be... Are you doing a crime right now by ex exposing us to secondhand smoke? He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He wipes it off. because like, what about that scene in the background? Who's committing the crime? And it's Ote beating the shit out of Kondo for stalking her. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so in that situation, who's committing the crime? And he just doesn't answer the question. He just moves on. Uh, I really like the bit with Sokoyo and Sachan where she's just trying, where she tries to explain to them in a gentle manner how what women do, and the kids immediately get grossed out and they're immediately like tearing up about it. Uh, except for Sachan, who's just teared up because she doesn't know the techniques that they have. But also the the bit of them when they're stepping forward is also really funny because Sachan's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go into the factory" because they're trying to make it seem like the factory tour is like this great thing. And then she tries to stop her, but then it's too late and she gets hit by the the sniper bullet straight to the head. <laughs> And then Hijikata's line where he says, like, um, 
he's gonna shoot the kids next and then he gets stopped because he's like no those are my guests or whatever that's really funny like that bit of where they're just shooting everyone in the head is really good because they also do like a full shot of them like like the 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 background is blue and they're just getting shot in the head which is really good uh, I like the bit with Kondo where he talks about being a stalker, about how you should get a job that you can kind of see yourself with that you won't fully hate. And in this case, his job is being a stalker. Um, and then there's also a, re- a reveal like after um, Hasegawa says like, oh yeah, I'm a patriot and I hate it. And he goes like, you'll never understand my pain. He's like, I do understand your pain because me too, I'm a stalker and I'm a patriot at the same time. <laughs> And then the kids go like, "What's a patriot?" And then they both go, "No idea. <laughs> we are, we just are patriots, but we don't know why we're patriots." And then also when they're um, assembling the patriots, they make a Metal Gear joke, which is pretty funny. They talk about like we call this one a, the Solid, and the other one Naked, which is Solid Snake and Liquid Snake. Which I thought that's I guess the reason that they called it the Patriot was a thing of Metal Gear, but I think it may have been just been a throwaway joke, but yeah, really enjoyed it. It was a bunch of silly things. Willy Wonka humor also gets me, as opposed to the last time they tried to do a Willy Wonka joke, it didn't really feel for me. This one, they actually did a full-on actual Willy Wonka bit, so I enjoyed it a bit more than the, the last time they tried. So, I enjoyed it. How do you feel, Zen? It was pretty good. Um, I, you know, after the last arc, it's hard to get into a purely silly stuff. Um, yeah, but the, I, yeah. I laughed out loud when, uh, like, when Sachan and um, Sokoyo got shot, I was like, "Huh." And then when Hijikata got shot, I was like, "All right, that's pretty good." And then when, when Gintoki gets shot by Kakura and Shimachi, I was fucking laughing, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's so really good. good. Oh, and then when they put, it, 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 yeah, basically when they take out the guns and then they put his body on the conveyor belt, and he has like a full on flashback, and they have to remove his clothes to put on his flashback clothes. Also, the bit where um, where he's on the conveyor belt and Hijikata is also on the conveyor belt. Yeah, and he gives and him he's, a like, boss talking to his dead body. That's right, and then really there's also a bit where both Sacha and Sequoia are both writing and they just have do your best, become Japan's factory chief, best factory yeah. chief in Japan. And they're like, why Why are they acting like he's leaving on a train? <laughs> and then it turns out that his name is Facto. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Facto is his name. Oh, and then they have a... Oh, fuck. Yeah. It is really a lot of good... A lot of it turns around when they start shooting each other in the end. A lot of the beginning is like a lot of good like silly bits, but it's all building up to this end bit where they're just going forward. And then, of course, those kids just immediately like... Uh, they use like the inspirational Gintama music for the end. Yeah, when they're like when he's like going to accomplish his dream, they're playing like the the music. <laughs> they are, which really sells the bit of everything going good, and the it's re- it's really well done. It was really funny, and like you said, yeah, I can understand. That's why we keep these episodes separate for the most part, is to not make it so <laughs> they get boiled down or something. And I feel like this one does at least a good job to get you back into like the. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we're out of the serious arc time. It's back to. The regular Gintama stuff <laughs> back here. So, good job on that. All right. Let's move on to the next episode. Oh, I also like that after when they got shot, when they're in the assembly line, when Sequoia and Sachan are in it, the kids say, like, didn't those guys get shot? <laughs> yeah, so they're like, aren't those the people that got shot? <laughs> yeah. I was like, thank you for p- paying close to the continuity. I appreciate it. All right, episode 217 is up next, and that is What Happens Twice Can Happen Thrice, and this is the second time that they've used this title before. This was used in a previous episode, episode 89, which had the exact same. This episode, I assume, is the the joke is that it's the same as the prior ones, because they're just at the pool again, with the Shogun again. No, Uh, no. And it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, because this is the third Shogun episode. Yeah, but they've been at the pool with him in the past, for sure. Have they? percent they have, but yes. Because I distinctly remember the joke where someone's like, oh my god, this guy died in the pool, and then Katsura pops up, and he's like, ha-ha! Like, Holy... I distinctly remember that. Okay, go, go, into, this, go into this one again, because I cannot remember that for the life of me. <laughs> I remember all the so... other Shogun episodes, but I don't remember them yeah, doing so this before like, him. Yeah, um... They're helping out Hasegawa because he's a lifeguard at the pool now. Um, and Gintoki's plan is like, 
we're going to have to make sure that the kids understand that the pool is scary. And once they know the pool is scary, they can go in the pool. Like, that's the only <laughs> way we'll let them in the pool. Um, they're also, like, peeping on women. Um, at one point, they call Ote. I forget what they call her. It's something funny. Um, I think, oh, fuck. It's really? an actor's name, but the, instead of their name, they call them Flat. They, yeah, they, 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 it like was like, I'm sorry, something. you weren't that, you're Sylvester Stallone. It, it's, yeah. it's like an action. I don't remember what they call it. Though. Fuck, I cannot remember it either. Now, that's really annoying because I remember <laughs> that the other one was Sylvester Stallone making all yeah. what they're calling her beforehand. Yeah, it's some actor's name, but they change the name into Flat instead of what it actually is. Mm -hmm. And she gets really pissed and then throws them in the pool. And then uh, Kentucky accidentally gropes Kyubei trying to get out of the pool. Um... And then everyone's stalker is also at the pool. So a bunch of people get like the shit kicked out of them in the pool and all the customers run away because the pool's filled with blood. Um, but then Cuts the with the there. fish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Shogun appears and he's like, I'm going to go swimming in my, my tidy whities as a Shogun does. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, what the hell? Like, you can't, you can't just like, is that a thing? <laughs> uh, and so they decide they're going to have a cavalry battle. Um, because they're trying to, like, get the girls' swimsuits to fall off. Like, that's the plan. Yeah, so the Shogun um, can have a good time. They're terrified of being killed yeah, if the Shogun has a bad time. Because they, they don't want the Shogun to have a shitty time. And so, um... Everyone ends up ganging up on the Shogun to try to rip off his, uh... His briefs. But then, like, something happens where he's, like... Like, he wets himself, or he, like, he's... <laughs> Like no, it, but, but the, in the beginning, when they say like, "Hey, the this guy wants to hang out with us," they say like, "Oh, that should be fine." But isn't it kind of weird? He's wearing like underwear, and then he goes, "Yeah, that's kind of weird." It's like there's a spot there. I don't want him to go in the pool with that. And then like he <laughs> he like he clearly is feeling very down about their comments because they're being loud about it. So that he goes to go switch with Hasegawa, and then they yeah, go like, he "Takes Hasegawa's trunks," and then he goes, "Hasegawa's way worse." <laughs> And also, there's a spot right on his crotch. What have you been doing? Have you been unloading on yourself? And he's like, don't say that about him. Like, he, the Kentucky's trying to not say that it's the Shogun, but he keeps saying, like, don't say that about him. Don't make him feel bad. <laughs> and then I think they cut to him, and he's crying. <laughs> it is yeah, un he's, like, crying. Um, and so then they're like, all right, everyone ends up ganging up on the um, Shogun mm -hmm. to try to, like, get him. Uh, but he has, like, insanely er elastic briefs that won't rip or anything. Mm -hmm. And so he, like, does this dramatic anime move, and he slices everyone's uh, bottoms off. And then Gintoki's like, all right, this wasn't so bad. And then Katsura slams into him off of the slide, like <laughs> Gintoki did to him earlier. And everyone thought, killed him. <laughs> and then he says, uh, with this kind of slide, I could kill, I could destroy the uh, Pakofo. Not realizing that he's taking out the Shogun. Yeah, he literally hit the Shogun. And he's like, with a slide like that, I feel like I could take down the Shogun. <laughs> and he actually does. Um, and yeah, that is in the basics this episode. <laughs> I could have sworn. I, I would be very curious to hear. I'm wondering, because if you remember it, it must have happened. But I, if me not remembering it is maybe the thing that's making me go, it has to be something off here. Because I could have swore that of the other Shogun episodes, it was them at the bar and then them at the haircut were the other two Shogun ones that I can think of. And then this is the third one. Who knows? But anyway, let me talk about this episode. I really like this episode because I like the Shogun. <laughs> The Shogun only shows up to get shit on, and you can almost immediately tell when the Shogun is going to show up, because it's going to be that the worst possible po moment for him to show up, he shows up, and then also that old dude shows up too, uh, Matsudaira. So almost immediately yeah. when I saw Matsudaira, I said, oh shit, the Shogun is coming up, because he only shows up when the Shogun needs to be here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, if if uh, if it's with the Shinsengumi, then he's here to deal with his daughter. If it's him with everyone else that is not the Shinsengumi, then he's here to summon forth the Shogun. That is what he's here for. Um, I like the beginning bits because all the beginning bits is basically them trying to justify there being no other people here for them and the Shogun. It's literally just them. Um, I like the... 
all the bits of everyone coming in, like all of them getting destroyed and beat up and stuff like that. Like the stuff with Sequo- Sequoia when she shows up. <laughs> also, her intro when they're just when they're just like looking for women and he just goes giant jugs and then he sees the jugs but then he looks at her face because like never mind, it's a drunk Terminator and then she immediately fucking puts a kunai on the back of his head. And then the little kid that she's with goes to pick up the kunai and he just like is bleeding on his head at the bottom while they're having a regular conversation. It was really good. Uh, and then she also tries to tell the kid that she's with, which is the kid from the Yoshiwara and Flames arc that I can't remember the name at the moment, even though he's in this one. Uh, she Say, tries to... Seta or something? Seta, like that? that's right, that's correct. She's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to slide down. And she's like, first of all, you gotta pour a bunch of stuff on your body. And it's the stuff that they use in the massage parlors in, like, porno places. <laughs> And then she tells us, like, yeah, you need to sit down on, on the stool and spread your legs. And at this point, it's just, like, completely censored and they don't want to show you anything. And they're just like, no, d- please stop teaching the kid the wrong thing here. And then she goes fucking zooming. And I think that's why uh, Katsura is also zooming. Like, they keep coming back to this bit later of them putting the this weird jelly on them and then just zooming past down below, which is really good. Uh, the, the stuff of Otai was also pretty good. They just, like, slammed into her, which is funny because they've never slammed into her in this kind of way beforehand. Usually they just call her a monkey woman, but when they're with other women, then they start to attack her actual female body, which is not actually something to, uh, make fun of. She's a perfectly acceptable woman, except for, I guess, when you're compared to the other ones, you, I guess you fall. I'm gonna stop talking now. Anyway, the point is what I was trying to say. I realize that women actually watch this show, so I have to fucking watch my mouth. So forgive me. (laughs) <laughs> but the point is, is the bit here is I like it when they get beat the shit out of them right after the making fun of them there's a bit here where they say where they talk about like nobody wants to see your boobs then Kondo goes like I want to see them I'll d- <laughs> nobody wants to see your your cravity your your um your craven hole or something like your cravity to look for your nipples and he goes like don't worry Otai I will gladly st- to traverse the canvas to look for whatever nipple I can find and she beats the shit out of him and then later on they talk about like seeing camel toe and then he says like nobody wants to see your camel toe I'm not Lawrence of Arabia and then it goes to Kondo and he goes like don't worry Otai I don't want to see your camel toe either and then she beats the shit out of him for whatever reason even though that is the correct thing to say uh in that situation and yeah I also like the bit where there's a part with Kubei where after she's being consoled, after she's been, she's like, ah, oh, this is why I didn't want to go to the pool because the situation's like this. It's like, you're all monsters. You're terrible people. And she's like, come here. And she's like comforting her. And she's very clearly just like enjoying uh, rubbing up against her chest while they're going like, clearly this is a, a situation that she was perfectly happy to be in the entire time. And she stays that way for a bit. And yeah, all the stuff with the Shogun when he comes in and immediately is taking over. Like the, for some reason, making fun of this man and making, bringing him to the point of tears is never not funny to me yeah, they, it's funny because he keeps like a straight face but he's just sobbing he is he's like so sad he just wants to be a part of the fun and he wants to have fun and every single time he gets emotionally hurt like the the part where he's crying and he's wearing the goggles so they can't see his tears but it's clear that the uh, the water is welling up in his eyes as the goggles go in it's really good uh the bit where he sw- swaps clothes with hasagawa is really really funny uh the bit about the, the Alaska, he keeps bringing up like oh yeah all the shoguns traditionally wear tidy whiteies uh and then at the end he brings it back with the every one of them brings elastic so that's why they're most powerful and also this godlike pose that he takes where everyone is 100 percent like bowing to him and bowing in prowess of his amazing amazing uh, ability to remove everyone else's underwear is really funny i would have used that for the cover of this one but I'm almost positive the dude ass that is on here would get me some form of age restriction on the video. <laughs> so I can't. And then there's also a really good bit when they're trying to remove his pants. Because the, the original idea of them doing this is so that they could see them naked. And then at some point it gets distorted and the boys are like, we're doing this for the girls. For the girls' dreams of seeing some man skin. And then they go to show the girls and they're just playing volleyball by themselves. <laughs> not giving a damn about what they're doing which is really funny and yeah i ended up really liking this episode how do you feel zen yeah it was funny uh it was okay but when the shogun showed up it started getting funny a lot of the beginning stuff was is a lot of setup like it's a lot of setup to get to the situation where the shogun shows up 
<laughs> Otherwise, in the beginning, it's like a very like typical kind of borderline harem romance kind of style. Like, oh yeah, we're just here at like a pool, and there's like no consequences to anything that we're doing. And I think that's what they actually say when Hasegawa is getting ready, where, he, where Kentoki finally convinces him. He's like, hey, it's fine. The jump people are taking a break or whatever, so we can <laughs> relax and not worry about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. There's nothing bad that's going to happen here. And then that's when the Shogun shows up. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently, the last episode they used this title was the uh, the Bleach one. The Yeah, the one where they like go into the wooden sword. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But all right, I that's... just realized, did Kentoki get his wooden sword back? No, it's still broken. Okay. So they're, so they're staying with the continuity that it's yeah, broken. Yeah, yeah, they're staying with... I, I mean, at some point, they we did see that one episode where they say he just orders them online, but I also remember someone saying that that is not canon. So I assume that he still does not have a sword because he hasn't used a sword since it was broken. That's true. Yeah, he only had the, the one from the husband. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's what we're going to be here for right now. I actually should pay attention to that next episode to see if he actually has one. <laughs> Assuming he just bought one off screen at some point. But let's go move on to episode 218. The claws of a crab can snipe through a friendship. Go ahead, Zen. So this is basically the exact same as like four other episodes where they do this same exact bit where they want to eat the good food but they all want to steal the good food from each other. Mm. So it becomes like a giant war battle thing. Uh, this one is like a samurai battle over some crab. Um, and they, they're like trying to fight over the pieces of the crab. And one of the, the there's like um, <clears throat> princess crab paste or whatever, because they're like so excited they get to eat real crab. And they go through the whole episode doing a bunch of crazy shenanigans, trying to steal the crab from each other, um, only for Kagura to take the stuff that they had made, because Gintoki makes uh, crab and rice, and Shinpachi makes vegetables and, and the crab shell, like crab-flavored vegetables. Um, and Kagura pours them both together. So they're like, all right, we give up. And they put the um, the crab paste into it, and then they, they specify earlier on that um, that women don't like the crab paste or whatever. Only men do. <laughs> so they pour this into the thing that she has. And she's like, I don't want it anymore. You can have it. Uh, so they, they go to eat it. And they're like, let's get this crab party finally started. Like, they, that mends their friendship. Because they're, like, trying to kill each other over the crab. Um, and then they're like, eh, this isn't that good. <laughs> fake crab is better. And then it ends with the three of them sitting on the couch eating uh, fake crab. While the princess uh, crab cakes looks on in the sky and is just angry <laughs> at them eating imitation crab. Um, before we start this one, I have to ask, have you ever actually eaten crab? Yeah. How does it taste? What does it taste like? I have no idea how to describe it. Um, I mean... To be honest, it mostly just tastes like butter. Like, have you had lobster? Uh-huh. I never had lobster. Ah, uh, shit. I'm trying to think of something else. To I'm trying to think of something, because the way that crab looks like to me to eat, it seems like some kind of, like, meaty version of cotton candy. Does that make sense? No. Like... The texture is very similar to fish. It's, like, a little bit firmer than fish. Mm-hmm. It's like um... shrimp. A little bit less firm than a shrimp. You know, a shrimp you have to like get through that little outer skin layer. Uh -huh. um, it's a little bit less firm than a shrimp is, because mm. um, it's it's kind of like I have no idea how to describe it. It's like um, not flaky, but like if you were to take it and like rub it between your fingers, it would come apart. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like it's not like a solid piece of meat. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of like a fish where it's not like fully held together. Uh, a little bit firmer than fish, not quite as firm as a shrimp. Taste is similar to a shrimp. Oh. Not quite as strong, I would say. You know, a shrimp has like a... You, you taste a lot of the butter with the shrimp, but mm -hmm. you still get a, like some flavor with it too. Mm -hmm. um, crab flavor is a little bit more subdued than a shrimp is. You get a lot of butter when you're eating crab. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was wondering because I'm, I'm not really a big fish eater and I only had recently actually eaten a shrimp of some kind. 
Um, so I was watching this entire episode going like, what does the crab actually taste like? Because I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe it's a thing of like in um, cartoons specifically because it's the same thing. Whenever I see it in a cartoon or an anime, whenever they're eating some form of shrimp or crab, it looks really good. But then when I actually see it in person, it does not. I wonder if that's actually how you're supposed to eat them and it's a similar kind of like thing. And then I then halfway into this episode, I started wondering, what does a crab taste like? So I asked and I said specifically, don't say... <laughs> Can you explain it without You've saying? You've never had even like fake crab. No, I've never had fake crab either. We get we'd have an entire discussion about things I have not next eaten because it's a Next time you get sushi, get a crab roll. It's literally just fake crab in rice in seaweed. Oh, okay. And 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 it tastes very similar to what real crab tastes like. A little bit less, I guess, like uh, crab. A little bit less flavorful, but very similar. Mm, okay yeah because i was definitely curious and when i asked someone can you describe to me what a crab tastes like without just saying it tastes like crab they couldn't <laughs> the, no, the one... it's very hard to do <laughs> without having crab or lobster as like a reference point it's very hard to do yeah you'd have to be someone who's actually very good at like describing the flavors of something so i knew i was asking the impossible but i still felt like hey maybe someone out there can figure out how to explain this to me but either way so going into this one, that's how I was addressing this crab situation. Would anyone really fight that hard for a crab? <laughs> Doesn't seem like an animal or a food that you... I could understand steak. I can send... is like... Uh, it, it's considered, I think, like... Well, also, remember, they're very poor. So they do yeah, this a lot. Yeah. They do this over, like, beef strips, too. Um, but crab is, is, like, a decently priced thing. Crab legs are pretty expensive. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um... Some of the food did look good, like when he put that rice in the crab, and then the, the, when I said that, they did immediately shit on the on shit on it by saying it barely tastes that different from normal rice. <laughs> you need the vegetables. Yeah, cra crab is not a super strong flavor, so you can't mm. put it with like rice. Yeah, okay, that that would make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, I, this ended up being funny enough the one of the food episodes that I liked hearing about the least, and I think it's simply just because I'm not <laughs> that big on crab. <laughs> all the other beef strips, all the other ones I could kind of understand and put with, and I thought it'd be funny, but for some reason in my head I'm like, this seems like a lot of effort to be putting into for a crab, but I did not feel that way for any of the other ones. <laughs> but I did like some bits about it, like I liked the... Um, uh, when when they when they dumped it in there, and Cogger immediately was like, "Eh, fine, I'm leaving now." She's also the only one that doesn't have the like inner thought, so it also sounds really funny because it seems like she just kind of is running on instinct, while Shimpachi and Gintoki are just like trying to have like a mind battle over this crap. <laughs> I did also like the beginning parts where they were talking about, like, oh, man, there's a blackout. It's like, what happened? It was like, did they... It's like, apparently this was a bit in the manga as well. Like, they did this in the manga, too. Because uh, uh, they said the gorilla, which is Sorochi, it was like, yeah, he was um, he was too busy working on a one-shot and got overstimulated. So he had this, like, this bit of a blackout. And they're like, god damn, what a lazy asshole. <laughs> they just start making fun of him, saying, like, oh, look at him being so proud making a one-shot. Can't even... <laughs> rely on his main manga series uh the uh the bit where um shimpash is like haha actually i have the better flavored thing and you don't have the the flavor and Gin gintoki goes to shoot the rice cannon and it like fizzles out it's really <laughs> fucking funny it is that that bit is funny very funny too um it, it was a funny episode it just ended up being a case of just like just because it's not a food that i particularly like i couldn't imagine it fighting over it too hard as opposed to the other ones where i could imagine it uh but it was still good it was still uh funny bits here and there how do you feel zen uh yeah it was pretty good it had some decent jokes here and there i, I this is the kind of like complete out there-ness that i find it hard to to get into especially because it's happened so many times mm -hmm. I, I like flashed back to the episode where uh they have the beef bowl battle mm -hmm. and uh atose and Catherine are like legendary demons of eating <laughs> beef bowls or something um yeah. i thought that one was funnier than this one but this one yeah was pretty good. and that's what i th that's the funny thing maybe it's just because they had it was only three it was like to three characters and it wasn't more characters coming in to be like yeah eating because again that point where Catherine and Tosa showed up and just start fucking destroying those meatballs was really funny 
<laughs> also, I feel like there was more Death Note jokes in the other ones as well. Yeah, which... this one, uh, they were trying to do like a Sengoku... It reminds me of the, the like of the what's the video game called Sengoku Basara or something. Uh, yes, Samurai Sam- Warriors. Samurai like Warriors. Uh... Yeah, it reminds me of that because they're like wearing that armor. And what does Gintoki say? It was really funny because he was like the nobody likes the body of the crab. Women and girls have always avoid it because but, but real men know about the uh, the crab paste because it's it's like they call it princess crab paste and they're like yeah it's horribly ugly on the outside but it's actually the best lay in the entire <laughs> Sengoku era <laughs> that's right that they do a central shot of Prince yeah <laughs> again there are there are good bits here <laughs> it's just that i did yeah there there's quality bits but it's just not that funny throughout in my opinion yes i ended up liking the beautiful one yet but that's still <laughs> when the when the good bits hit they do hit that i do remember that that is really funny uh that's episode 218 so let's move on to the next one. Uh, episode 219, which is technically a not a two-parter, but it is technically a two-parter. The first part is called People Forget to Return Stuff at the Time Without Even Realizing It, and then the other one is I'll Say It When We Actually Get To It. But we'll start with this first one. People Forget to Return Stuff All The Time Without Even Realizing It. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, this guy named Iwamatsu, his job is he he likes to be a punching bag. So he goes to the Kabuki district because he's like, oh, there's a lot of scumbags here. Everyone will want to, will want to punch me. Uh, and then he, so Kagura punches him and like knocks his ass out. Um, and so he's like, oh my God, is it, maybe I can't be a punching bag. And she's like, no problem. I'll find you like shittier people. Um, and so there, she's helping him like try to live out his dream. Of being a punching bag um so they go to the bar and they're like oh there's some drunks in there but that doesn't work um and then gintoki is like i've got this video game uh that i borrowed from takeshi <laughs> and they're like, they start fighting again uh and then they go to the um what do they call joy the the anti foreigner faction? Yeah, they change what they call them at some point to this. Yeah, it, it, well, they made a, cr- a crunchy roll translation issue, but they call them the joy for now. Yeah, that to is... me, it's still the anti foreigner faction. Yeah. Um, and so he's he's there, and he's like, "Hey, we can we can have you do this with the the anti foreigner guys." Um, and so they're like, "All right, let's go, let's go get him," and they all run up to go and punch him, and he's like, "Wait, I can't get all of you at one time." And then Katara stops them, and he's like, hey, um, everybody stop. A samurai can never attack an enemy that's not fighting back. And then he's like, he's like offering the guy to beat up his men in like return for their insolence, and Kagura's <laughs> all about it. She's like beating the shit out of them. But he's like, no, I need the money from you hitting me. And then uh, Katara's like, I understand. I will pay the penance because they're my men. I will let you punch my prized possession, this video game cartridge that I borrowed from Takeshi. <laughs> Uh, Monkey King, something. That, that Takeshi, like, no one ever gives him back the stuff that they take from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Shinsengumi attacks, and all of the people escape. Um, and Kagura's like, hey, you guys could uh, you guys could use the punching bag because Katsura got away, and I bet you're very sad about it. Um, and then Yamazaki is like, oh... Um, here, let's. Uh, I'm gonna give you the stuff. It, it starts with a bribe. It, it starts with Kondo. Um, Kondo does that bit first. Where, all right, because Kondo's yeah. like apologizing for Okita, because Okita so, like takes his money and just yeah. <laughs> randomly. <laughs> and so he's like, "Here, I'll give you this stuff. It's it's not a bribe. It's a it's compensation." Um, and then it's like cheat codes that he stole from Takeshi for a video game. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then Yamazaki does it as well, but the Yamazaki ones just say Anpan, like, scribble <laughs> all over the page, like, like, all over, like, like he's insane, like, it's just like, everywhere. <laughs> and then he, like, peeks back around the corner eating an Anpan, and he's, like, mumbling to himself, and they're like, oh my god, did he just curse us? What is he trying to summon? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then they're, like outside and Kagura's like sorry i couldn't do it and he's like you know what maybe i'm not built to be a punching bag this place actually has really good people uh and then Kagura's like wait 
there's one more person that you could help, and they point to a car, and it's Takeshi's car, and his name is written on it, because Takeshi's name is written on all of his stuff. <laughs> um, and he's, like, crying, because he co-signed a loan for somebody who skipped town, so now he's stuck with the loan. And he's like, I'm never going to ever get anything given back to me by anyone. And so he walks over to the car to let Takeshi punch him. Uh, but then when he does it, he's, like, pressed up against the glass, and they even <laughs> animate his breath fogging the glass. <laughs> and he's like, you can, what he says, like, you can have me for a whole minute. I'll make yeah. all the bad memories go away. away. <laughs> <laughs> and so he punches him out of the window because he's like, oh, my God, there's some freak. And he has, like, a dramatic fly backward where there's, like, lit up background. As he hits the ground after Takeshi punches him. Uh, uh, yeah, and then he leaves and he goes, like, ah, somehow that doesn't feel very good to me. <laughs> um... Yeah, I ended up really liking this episode. Uh, the the bit about for I really like the way Famicom cartridges look like. So the fact that they keep showing them uh, is really good. I wonder why. How come our net and NES? Because if you don't know, Famicom over there in Japan is the Nintendo Entertainment System, but over here our cartridges are like big ass square things for the NES. But they got like the cool little top loader thing. How the why? Why the fuck is that? Do you know? <laughs> Would you have any idea as to why they were different? In I have no clue. Yeah, I have to look that up because I'm now I'm actually kind of curious as to why is it so fucking different? Because uh, if you ever seen an original NES cartridge, it's a big old fucking square thing because you put it into the NES in the old days and you tap it in there. But in the Famicom one, it's like a um, it's like a little square thing. It's a little fatter and stuff like that. And you just put it up on the top of it. Uh, and so anyway, I really like uh, a lot of the Famicom jokes. The the bit about Takeshi constantly returning it. It also did remind me, because I also have a game that someone let me borrow that has their name on the back that I just never return. <laughs> so it made me remind me of that. Um, I also like the bit where av the the way that the or anti foreigners escape is that they all throw Famicom discs at the Shinsengumi and then run off. Uh huh. That's really good. The the Katsur gag where he's like, "I need to make a, a penance for my men. I need you to slap my cartridge at least three times." Yeah, he's like, "I want you to hit my my prize possession. It's like Super Monkey Ball or something." Yeah, it's like yeah, it's a monkey. It's like a, a Journey to the West style game. It's like um, super, yeah, Super Monkey Island or Super... I don't remember. It's, it's something like not like a that. real game, I don't think. But. The first one is. Destiny of an Emperor is a real game. Um, the second one has to be based off of something. It makes me feel like it's based off of maybe that Dragon Ball game. Because they had a Dragon Ball game on the Famicom. But they probably didn't want to actually show um, Goku on it. And so they made it that way. But who knows? And we don't know that much about the Famicom exclusive games. These are clearly ones that n probably did not come back to us but um funny enough destiny of an emperor did come over to us because it's a capcom game uh i think they might have changed the name and or the the look of it it does not look 100 percent like this as they want to do but anyway um i really like the bet with the cat takeshi as they keep finding stuff of his and then at the end when they find takeshi <laughs> he has all the stuff labeled with his name and he even says like i should have put my my name on the money that he lent borrow from the loan <laughs> Which is really good. Uh, that bit where he fogs up the glass is also really funny. Where he's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'll let you have my body for a full minute. I'll make all your bad feels go away. Really funny. Um, I also like in general that Katra still does this. That whenever he sees uh, Kagura, he immediately goes, Lena! <laughs> and then everyone in the anti forder also does the same thing. And they all call Kagura their leader as well. Uh, which is really good. Uh, the bit about Okita where they try and say like, oh yeah, you should pay Okita because Okita's into like the Seda stuff. He's like, uh, yeah, but I'm not really into it if they want to get hit, if that makes sense. If anything, you should be paying me. And then it ends up with him just taking money from the dude somehow. <laughs> and he tells him like, make it seem like I'm uh, taking your money. He's like, please, sir, I need that money. He's like, now make it seem like you're in middle school and this was your allowance. It's like, please, it's all I have. Uh, the bit with Kondo is also really funny when they're trying to be hush-hush about it, and he gives them the cheat codes, and then also, of course, when Yamazaki shows up, and it's just a bunch of Anpon everywhere, and he's still, like, clearly cursed by all the Anpon that has gone on from last episode. Uh, from uh, so many episodes ago, I should say. 
so yeah i thought it was a really funny episode it's a very simple episode <laughs> It has one bit, but I also really like that bit. I also like the bit when um, uh, with Kentucky as well, the way that his game actually divides into three places. Because he, because uh, originally he was gonna give him the game to say like, oh yeah, you can sell the game, and then he goes like, you can't because you borrow from that. And then it turns out Hasegawa borrowed it from Takeshi. It's like how who's gonna sell <laughs> who's gonna sell a game that they borrowed? He's like who's gonna let someone borrow a game that they borrowed? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and they start fighting each other in the streets. So. I liked it. How do you feel, Zen? It was okay. Um, I thought it was fine. Yeah. Uh, the Anfan joke was easily the funniest one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The next part is funny enough. Not actually. Uh, this is technically not a two parter, even though this is a two parter, because the next episode's title is "We Ended Kind of Early," so we're just gonna start the next episode. <laughs> So this is the second time it's happened, I think, where they ended an episode and it turns out like, oh man, there was not enough for a full episode. So we're just going to show you this, the beginning of the next one. So why don't you start by telling us what happens here, Zen, because it's basically the beginning parts that will explain the next episode. Uh, the second part of 219 is like, um, they're at like a bathhouse um, and it's like the Shinsengumi and the... Uh, odd jobs. Yes, the odd jobs crew are at the uh, bathhouse, like the the public baths they have in Japan, where everyone just like bathes together. Mm -hmm. um, and they meet the the scary guy that's actually Hidra. nice from like a million sh uh, episodes ago. It has been so long since we last saw Hidora. <laughs> I did, it's been so long that I forgot who he was for a minute. I recognized him after a little bit, but it took me a minute. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and then eventually I got it. But yeah, so he's uh, he's like there with his family. Um, and they're like, yeah, we came to visit you in Edo. And he's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the sights or whatever. Um, they all ended up going into the kiddie pool because they're like, it's, you know, they'll let them have the big one and we just won't be around them. But then they all get into the kiddie pool, and they're like, yeah, our species actually can't do hot water. We had to do this one. So they're like, shit, we should have gone in the should have gone to the big pool the whole time. God damn it. Um, <laughs> and, that, and that's where it ends for this one, and we'll start off in the next one. It, it literally is just like... Oh it, God, that's right. That is where it cuts off. I, it I cut, completely forgot. That it, it cuts off right off. when they get into the pool, just because the next episode literally picks up from there. Um, I have oh shit i calculated it and then i t put away the why would i do that <laughs> i literally calculated how long it had been since the last time we saw hedora and then it came uh and then i closed it <laughs> anyway the last time we saw him was 171 episodes ago zen that's crazy yes he has been in the ops and he has been in the eds and the only mention that i've ever bought brought up to him in terms of actually having a focus in the episode it's been that many episodes um usually he's in the background somewhere or he's like in the op or the ed he is maybe the the least character that shows up after being introduced which is kind of a shame because i actually kind of really do like him because <laughs> he's just a giant he's maybe the only amanto who actually looks like what you would assume an alien looks like. Because Catherine is just a cat girl. Kagura is just Chinese. <laughs> and there's not really many other Amanto. Um, the prince obviously is a is an alien as well. But in terms of more Amantos, there's not that many of them. So it's kind of nice to see Adora come back. Um, and the this beginning a bit of it. I like the intro of it. Um, there's a bit where when they're going in there... Um, Kagura's off showering with Otai, and then when they go in there, uh, Kondo's immediately in there, and he's getting ready to um, drill open the other side so he can peep, and then um, uh, Shinpachi just shoves it straight up his ass. He just shoves a giant drill, and it's just bleeding out. I was like, damn, that was a lot of uh, bodily harm done to Kondo, not knowing what was about to happen to him in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> it was about to get somehow that bit is the least <laughs> worrying thing that happens to Kondo. <laughs> so it was uh, it was nice to see him back in the actual episode. I can't wait to actually talk about. So how do you feel, Zen, for this little bit here before we go into the uh, actual episode that it's based yeah, off? Yeah, it was fine. I was I was very confused, but it was fine. Yeah, nothing super interesting to say about it. 
All right, then let's actually go into the episodes then. Episode 220, The Bathhouse Where You're Naked in Body and Soul. Uh, so they're all in the weird bath with the other, like the demon, his, the, the family of demons. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, yeah, do you guys want some, some colder water? Because, you know, it's, um, it's kind of warm. Like, don't worry, I've got it. And they drop like a giant hunk of ice in there. Uh, and so all the humans are like, oh my god, we're going to fucking freeze. Um, so they end up diving under the water at, some, at one point, and they're like arguing about how not to die. Uh, and then Kondo gets tangled with the father's ball sack. Somehow, I, don't, I think he's literally, I think at one point Gintoki's just like, hey, what are you holding? And he's just like <laughs> holding his really long outstretched ball sack. That is correct. Um, and so they're like, all right, we have to make an excuse for what happens. And so they're trying to like make up reasons, and then Kondo comes out, and he's like, "I'm, I'm your dad. I was made young by the spring. I'm, I'm your dad." <laughs> um, and so he's trying to get out, and then their ball sacks are like entangled with one another, and yes. they're like, "Hey, something's, something's connected to your crotch. It looks like you're old." Because for some reason they buy it that he's the dad made young again. <laughs> Dor- uh, Dora's race is just a very nice amount of race, and it's just very, very trusting. Nice, yeah. They, they 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 buy it and they're like yeah something's hanging from your ball sack it looks like your old form and he's like no that's just my current ball sack look how wrinkly it is it's just, it's, those are my balls and they're like well i've never seen your balls before so i guess that's true um and so they're they're like what let's wash our back let, let us wash your backs for you because you you know you helped us and they're like no 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 we'll we'll show you how you do it in edo um and they they put lotion on them, and that ends up, like, horribly burning them. So they're, like, screaming. Um, and so Kentucky's like, all right, we gotta, we really got to wash this off of them. And he's running, and he slips on the lotion, and he, like, punches one of their heads through the wall. Um, and then so it was like, all right, I'll do that too. And he punches another one's head through the wall, and he's like, they, they all end up doing it except for Hijikata. And then they're like, listen, Hijikata, you got to do it, or else you're going to end up like Kondo, who's, like, they started washing Kondo's back, and he has, like, horrible wounds in his back from when they started. And then they pour the lotion on him, and he's, like, screaming, there's <laughs> lotion in my wounds. Uh, and so Hijikata punches the other one through the wall. Um, but then one of them gets their horns stuck in Kondo's ass, and uh, they can't get him out because Kondo has, quote by Okita, uh, unbelievably powerful anal muscles. And so uh, Okita just breaks the horns off. And they're like, shit, what do we do? And so Gintoki stabs horns into the guy's head that has the broken horns. And they're like, wait, what horns are those? The other ones are still stuck in Kondo's ass. And Gintoki broke off another one's horns (laughs) to use as those horns. Uh, And eventually they end up dumping all of them back in. And then the dad wakes up and he's like, all I wanted to do was know that you came here and made some friends, and you did. Uh, And so then they're like, let's return the favor to these nice people and bathe them Edo-style. But Edo-style, to them, is all the horrible shit that Gintoki and them have just done to them. So Ote and Kagura are outside waiting for them, and you just hear them all screaming inside of the bath. Yeah, well, Kagura sings a little soap song, and they get, like, a special, like, a memories of this episode plays over the ED. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Which is really funny, and then the ED shot for this one, the special shot is the 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 father and Kondo joined together by a long ball sack. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me talk about this one. I really liked it because it went a fucking crazy, uh, f- insane at a certain point. Um, there's a bit at the beginning when they're talking about like, oh yeah, it's, we actually need it to be colder. And Shinpachi says, like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, make it colder. And then uh, Hidoro goes, I also need to stop calling him Hidora because I keep calling him Hidora because I keep imagining the the Godzilla creature <laughs> called Hid- Hidora. <laughs> That's why I keep saying his name wrong. But Hidoro, he, um, he says, like, don't worry, I got it. I came prepared. And he has, like, a giant iceberg that he just launches into the, the bath. Yeah, which just is... smashes it into the thing. Yeah, he just smashes it in there. And then all the other dudes are like, oh, our brother. He just came so prepared for everything. <laughs> He's ready for it. Uh, there's a bit there where when um, they're <laughs> underwater and Kondo gets stuck to the ball sack. 
Uh, they're going like two people have to go up there and s- explain like, hey, just kind of cover for us. And when uh, the two that go up there are Hijikata and Shimpachi, and then when they're talking about it, because they're trying to get Kondo away from the ball sack, and you can see it underwater, like he gets tangled in it. He is <laughs> like he's unable to get away from this gigantic ball sack. Um, the father says like, you know, this is this is uh, this this place is making me feel real weird. <laughs> I'm feeling something here. He goes like, "Oh yeah, that's because the the it's the water. We take it from like a a Viagra Springs, which is like a Viagra Springs." It's like, "Oh okay, that's that explains why I'm feeling something so crazy down there." Then it explains so much. Uh, and then the bit where they're where he's saying like, "Oh, he goes underwater when they," it says like, "Oh, he's gonna join them in pretending, in, not in pretending in um." In the contest that they're doing, he's like, oh, really? Because he's, it looks like there's bubbles, and it's like he's gasping for air. He's like, no, no, no. He's fine. He's like, he's he's participating. And then the, his hand goes up, and he goes like, oh, he's putting his hand up. V for victory. <laughs> he's saying that he's going to win. <laughs> and then Kondo pops up, and then Kondo is pretending to be the dad, and he puts, like, the soap to his ears and to, to make it seem like he's part of their race because they have horns, so he puts horns, uh, he puts the horns up into his head. Uh, which is really good. Uh, and then I like the bit where while they're attached, the ball sack thing where the, 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 the whole reason of why they understand it is because like, I guess I've never seen your ball sack. So I guess it has to look that way <laughs> is really funny. Just the logic behind someone are just trusting is like, okay, I guess I've never seen it. So I guess that could just be the case is pretty funny to me. Uh, the bit where they're trying to uh, wash everyone and they're trying to do it Edo style and Gintoki fucks up and then Hijikata fucks up and puts a horn on his head and then he's trying to say like oh yeah this is how we do it in Edo and then Gintoki immediately is like eh I've never done that before like he refuses to join in with Hijikata's mistake <laughs> because the mistake uh, is uh, removing their head from the wall and then stabbing yourselves with the horns on the top of the person and he goes like, oh, no, no, that that is not, I've never done that before. And then Okita's like, oh, really? Because we do that all the time in the Shinsengumi. And then he does it and then he just hits uh, Hijikata with the spiky end of someone else. And then they start having like a battle between the brothers. <laughs> like they both pick up both of uh, two of Hidora's brothers and they just start yeah, wailing at each other. Yeah, spears. <laughs> using his spears. And then Kotoki goes like, why are they just letting you do that? <laughs> like, why aren't they saying anything back? <laughs> Which is pretty good. And yeah, that bit where when they're putting on the soap because like it turns out that their one weakness is just soap and they're all on fire. And they goes like, oh, see, look, uh, your father's feeling the same way. And the reason is that they put it on the open wound that Kondo has on his back. <laughs> Pretty good. And I did like the like the end message here, even though it's been a very long time from Hid- Hidoro. I do kind of like a character who is just like, he's such a nice guy. And especially after all the things that go down, what happens to his family in this one, the fact that he's still just very much like, oh man, well, thank you so much. It, you know, it seems like a little bit rough and we would never actually do this on our home planet. I'm very thankful that you would join your customs with us. And the way his dad is like, okay, listen, this place is shit. This place sucks. <laughs> Living here is terrible, but I didn't come here to actually have a good time. I came here to check on you because I care most about you because you've always, even on our planet, have been kind of like, um, um, you've had to live by yourself and kind of like that. So I'm just happy that you have friends. So I thought it was a very nice little like, oh man, so much terrible shit has gone down. And then of course, when they go like when they're having their nice little moment and he goes like, let us wash your backs in the style of Edo. There's a bit there where Okita realizes what's going to (laughs) happen and he tries to run away. (laughs) And they show him, like, running away from everyone in the middle of Hidoro talking, and then he, like, stumbles and falls. Yeah, that was the that was the funniest thing in the episode to me, was when they're like, let's show them, uh, let's give them a wash Edo style, and everyone, it's, like, dawning on them what that means. Yeah. And they're, like, looking scared, but Okita just turns around and starts <laughs> to run. Immediately, he realizes what's gonna happen, and he's like, oh, no, no, no. But because of the slippery shit that's all on the floor, he falls down. <laughs> So, I liked it. I thought it was a funny episode. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was not my favorite episode of the day, but it was mm. pretty good. Um, it's a lot of ball humor. I'll give you that. Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was fine. I, I think that Hidoro's funny just in general. Like just mm-hmm. the concept of him is funny. 
Um, so I thought that was pretty good because every time he says like a really nice thing, but they always frame it with like that anime purple smoke that like monsters have. Yeah. Even when he's just like, thank you all for being my friends. And it's like horrible, <laughs> evil looking. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. But it, was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Like, it, like everything he says, they just assume that he means evil. Like remember when he goes like, oh yeah, it's going to be like a dynamite. He's like, he plans to blow up the Capitol. <laughs> Like, he's just, like, saying regular words, and they're coming off as menacing just because of the, the look of him. So, really funny. Um, yeah, and that and it's also good to just have him back. It's it's good to see it's good to see that in this new season that we're seeing, all the OP merchants are coming out in full force. And they're all making their way. All but one. <laughs> back into the show. <laughs> Everyone but one. He's still out there somewhere waiting, lurking. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for his episode someday to come but that is gintama for this week that is another five episodes down so let's talk about what we'll be talking about next week for gintama hopefully assuming that nothing bad happens to <laughs> either one of us plenty of stuff ends up happening so just to be sure uh next week it should be episodes uh 221 to 226 which will include which will have the jugam arc uh, two random episodes, and then the jail arc, um, and then following up after that, it will be episodes two twenty seven to two thirty one, yeah, to two thirty one, which will feature the the finally the crossover with Skit Dance, another tiny little arc and two random episodes, and then we'll have our next uh, five episode arc, which will be the Renho arc, and that's how it's going to be looking like for the next three weeks basically i just uh gave you the the plan out for what march is likely going to be looking at <laughs> looking like <laughs> assuming everything goes to plan we'll have those episodes ready for next week so that's the end of the show everyone so it's time to talk about where can you find zen if you want some more zen stuff zen where can they find you they can find me over on my channel where we talk about the shonen jump manga yeah I uh heard. as it's currently coming out Good old Shonen and Chill. Yeah, that's right. Shonen and Chill. Uh, I heard recently they got someone. Uh, one of the, the, the leakers down. And now you're oh, just man, down to one. Oh, man, it's crazy. They, they're, they're busting down the fucking doors, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they're going in. I heard. I remember. I woke up one day and my friend had, had sent me a message saying, like, yo, they got him. And I'm like, who? And they're like, one of the JJK leakers. I was like, oh, my God, they really did? <laughs> Holy shit. It's a crazy ongoing saga with all that stuff. And then also there's uh, stuff to read as well. Uh, yeah, I guess there's also manga that you get. Kagurabachi is doing real good. Uh, yes, Kagurabachi is popping off. One day, I might, might be finally time for me to stop screwing around and actually read it now. Seems like it's here to stay, so I think it's uh, safe for me to finally join in. Um... And that's about, uh, I was going to say, <laughs> that's about, everything else is just kind of like, yeah, kind of going through. Some crazy stuff happened in Chainsaw Man when I read it. I was like, well, that yes. seems weird. Can't yes. <laughs> can't wait to see more of that. Uh, so go ahead and go to Zen's channel for more of that. If you want some more me stuff, you already know the channel to find more wokey things. It's right here. Uh, hopefully with some more things to be released soon. I've just kind of been relaxing because I had a very, very big rush of work stuff that I needed to do. And then when I finally got my week off where I was like, okay, I think I could make more stuff. My body cut up to me and said, how about you just don't do anything <laughs> and relax for a little bit. So I've been, uh, relaxing a little bit more, but there should be more videos coming out pretty soon. Um... Hoping to, um, in theory, I think the new Dragon Ball Z card game is coming out on the 29th, when you've heard this. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with uh, Shonen <laughs> Jump games anymore. I feel like something happened after JJK released, and there are a bunch of fucking chickens running with their heads cut off. Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> yeah, that JJK game, just tanking. Dude, that tweet of that guy saying, I need a 10 people to join my tournament or I'm going to have to cancel the tournament. Yeah, no one entering the tournament for it. That's it's just like the most sad. refunded game ever. Fuck. That, that sucks in general. Just because it's pretty... I don't... Even if it is a shitty fighting game, I still don't really like to see community of fighting games go down in any kind of capacity. 
Um, well, I don't know if a community ever formed for that. Like, and, uh, to be fair, no one, none ever did, and I don't think any will ever form. So the fact that there is someone trying, it just kind of sucks. It it really does kind of come up to that mind of just like, I guess nobody wants to be playing this. It really is the ultimate sign of just like, ain't nobody want me. <laughs> ain't nobody want to play as Gojo <laughs> in a fight in a technical fighting game. That's just kind of sad to me. And apparently Fighters Z's rollback is coming on on the 29th. They just announced that fucking out of nowhere yesterday. Um, they said, hey, this is coming to PS5 and Xbox One. Also, there's going to be rollback attached to it. And everyone was like, wait, what? That's weird. It seems like, in theory, you wouldn't want to have this interfere with the other DBZ game that's going to be released. But like I said, I've tried to look high and low for any form that Fusion World, the digital client, is coming out on a PC client somewhere. Can't find shit. The only person I can find that ever talks about Fusion World is D-Free. And I feel like going up into his DMs and asking, Yo, bro, can you just tell me when this shit launches? Because I don't know. <laughs> it, it is frustrating, honestly. Like, what is going on with Shonen Jump games where I'm like, I'm trying to play them. I'm trying to have a fun and good time. Yeah, let me play your game. Yeah, and they're making it, like, just unbelievable levels of hard and difficult for no reason. Um, so look forward to that. If there's a video of Fusion World coming out, it's because it turns out it actually did come out. And I was able to download the PC client. It's not on Steam. You have to download an actual PC client because I think they think that they're Pokemon TCG. They're not. So good luck with that. <laughs> Hopefully they realize like, yo. Yeah, it went great for DC Dual Force. Yeah, it went great for DC Dual Force. Do you remember the last time they tried to release a card game? It was called a, a Buchigiri match. Does everyone remember <laughs> the art of uh, Buchigiri? I remember hearing about it and it dying. Yeah, it died because it never... A Buchigiri match was a card game in Japan that never left... It never Wasn't even got like a client. Browser only, or it something? was a browser only Japanese game. That's and so insane. It had some. Make a, why would you make a browser only card game? It is insanity. The only you know the funny thing is is like I've seen browser only card games, but their excuse is that they're tiny and the year was two thousand six. <laughs> Budget Game Match launched like twenty fifteen, and was Dragon Ball. One of the biggest uh, anime IPs that you could have at that point. Oh, just completely weird. It might not have been 2016 because now I'm getting my timeline screwed up because I think Dokkan is what nine years old. So what was happening? What was nine years ago from 2024? That is uh, 2013. So it would have have to have come out somewhere around 2016. Okay, no, something like that. That I actually based all uh, mobile games. <laughs> Based off of how, how relative did Dokkan release originally? Because that's like the the Pagan Zero in my eyes for Dragon Ball um, side games. <laughs> it's the ultimate form of a side game. But anyway, hopefully more stuff like that will be coming to the channel. And uh, if you want to show some more support for Shonen Archive, you can always leave a like, comment, um, and sub I guess subscribe. Yeah, that helps too. But <laughs> if you want to help this specific show... Liking and commenting is the best thing that you can do. And if you want to see more Shonen Archive, that's how you can subscribe and see more. Um, yeah, and that's it. That is the end of the episode now. So it's time for me to say, say goodbye, Zen. Say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, everybody. So.